Hello and welcome. My name is Matthew Marquit, and this is the third video in the Beginner's Guide to Construct 3. And in this video titled Background and Tile Map, we're going to talk about how we can get started with our scene. Now, the first thing, of course, we need to know, and I mentioned it a little bit in the previous video, is you're going to actually have to have some sort of sprite assets that you're going to use in order to create this. Now, you have several options. Obviously, I already showed you that your super pl platformer assets, the paid for ones, Ones. If you click on here uh, by that particular artist and you go to um, Construct's actual you know, asset store, you can buy these and use these. So these are the ones I'm using in the videos. But just the same, you can use some royalty-free sprites. Um, there's a whole website called Kenny's um, Free Assets. And if you go to it, it's not just sprites. They actually happen to have a ton of stuff. Um, but you go to it, and this is actually the link that I have provided here. Uh, this is just for platformer graphics, and you can see there's a whole ton of different variations, even two pages of them. Um, but they have all sorts of stuff from you know UI to isometric to 3D and all sorts of crazy stuff um, to them. Now, of course, you can always donate, right? You can go and uh, and donate, and give them some money uh, for using their assets. But these are basically royalty-free assets that you can use for anything, even games that you make money off of. So that's pretty cool. Um, now, for students of my class if you go to the file section uh, of the shell and download construct 2d final dot zip I've already got some of these actually it was these actual sprites which I find work the best the platformer pack redux uh, get those uh, those tend to be um, what I what I found the best version of the sprites now of course you can download any other uh, ones that you want and uh, and so on now of course you can also do clearly a Google search and uh, you can find both paid or royalty free like I give you some examples of search words things like pixel art sprites sprite sheets tile maps 2d tile maps 2d backgrounds yada 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 right animations things like that um, and uh, that's kind of what you want to look for um, when you're trying to find your own assets and whatever. Um, and of course, you know, you can just create your own and they will be free, duh. Um, but uh, you might already have your own art and you can go ahead and use those or if you want to make it from scratch. Um, as far as the students in my class are concerned, um, when you're making your own sprites, you can take the role of an artist. Uh, while creating it, so that can be actually part of what you do for your final, but it might make sense just in the beginning, of course, to use some sprites already that are already made just as a template to get the whole thing working, and then as you create your own art, just kind of replace it with the uh, with the new stuff that you just created, okay? So those are your several options, obviously, before you can uh, get started. Um, so now, that we actually have some. This one here is the. Um, let me shut that off there. But uh, this is the the uh, the example map. I'm gonna always have this in the background to kind of show you some things before I go and do them. Um, but the video tutorial uh, one here is blank on this side. But as I said before, we're gonna look into the background and tile map. Now you might know what a background is, but a tile map might be new to you. Uh, actually, if you go to the website. Um, of uh, Construct's website, and they talk a little bit about tile maps, and they're basically, quote, as it says here, they're objects that allow tile-based games to be designed more easily. So basically think about it in a way that it just kind of plops in a bunch of different images uh, really close next to each other uh, so that you can, um, you can basically paint uh, the background using some tools and you can even see we talked about this before there is a tile map bar and it has some awesome tools that allow you to quickly uh, uh, create the scene like so basically the ground and the platforms the player can interact with can all be part of the tile map and you're going to see how that works in a moment so the next thing I wanted to talk about is just kind of renaming our, our layer over here so you do have your tile map bar and your layers bar so you can see right here here's our layers bar we're going to rename this particular layer I'm right click going in here we're just going to call it game um, now keep in mind that when you have the free version right even if you're logged in you have a limit right to just two layers per layout um, the second layer is you're going we're going to use for UI right and basically if you more layers would allow you to do things like parallaxing which I'll mention uh, a little bit later on um, it's kind of unfortunate that we can't do that in the free version, um, but parallaxing is just something that kind of adds depth, right? So you have like a background moving at a different speed. Of course, the parallaxing, if it's set to zero, doesn't move at all, and that's where you get your UI. So we're going to put most of the stuff on the game layer. We're not going to create the UI layer, a layer until later, um, but just know that for now. 
All right, so let's first add a background. And to add anything into Construct, you just basically can double click in the scene, an empty area of the scene, or you can right click and insert new object. But I'm just going to double click here. You're going to open up your create new object type. You're going to see us do this over and over and over again throughout the tutorials. Um, so whatever way you prefer, right click or double click into a blank area is up to you. Now I'm going to scroll down here. And like I said, we're going to do a background. So there is a tile map. We'll get to that in a moment. We're going to click on tile the background. Now you could, if you don't actually have any strip, uh, sprites just do a, uh, a solid color but what we're going to do is we're going to actually use some real sprites that tile now I'm going to click in the scene to add it to the background and then you get this now yes this is where I could say if I wanted to pick a color and then take the paint buck and paint that in I can just use a solid color as a background technically you can just do a sprite if you wanted instead of a tiled background but the reason why a tiled background is awesome is if you actually have a tiled background and I'll use the one um, that is found um, by the, uh, the artist's uh, work that I'm using here but I'm going to go over here, let me go to my desktop, and we'll go find all this content. So we're in the Super Platformer, my assets here. All right, so <clears throat> I believe it's under decoration, yeah, so tiled background. So I'm going to click on this, and you'll see that this image is kind of hard to tell because it's really dark, but it has a bunch of little blocks and things, so they're meant to be kind of faded off in the background. You're more than welcome to use any other tiled map, but the whole point, of course, is that it tiles infinitely in every direction. So now if I hit... Uh, shut this off basically we'll shut off this editor here is the tile map now what's cool about it is you okay sit here cool we see it whoops I didn't want to make a duplicate of that um, but you'll see that we have the object here if you actually make it bigger it automatically expands the entire background so you can have it just go the entirety of the scene so that's what I'm doing right now of course later we might change the the overall size of the level right to have a much longer platformer um, but for now we're just gonna scale it like this but it's just infinitely we'll just keep repeating over and over again and all directions so that's really cool when you have a tiling background uh, the free Kenny uh, assets also have several tiling backgrounds that you can use uh, if you want to do that too right so you have multiple options solid color tiled background so on right and so that's how we can we can do that so that's pretty cool now the other thing of course is now we want to work with the tile map itself and the tile map is how we're going to create the walls the floors and so on so once again double click we're going to add this and so instead of the tiled background we're going to click on tile map and we're going to insert that same thing you just got to click in the scene to add it now there's this default tile map this isn't going to work for us um, because it's not meant to be a platformer um, but yes i there is this kind of you know cheesy little um, default map but we're going to load up the one uh, that i have here from this other artist and here's his tile map here and he's got them separated into different um, pieces if you really want to do it that way but the whole point of a tile map is that you have all these things in one sprite sheet right or tile map as it's Called. so we'll click on this one we'll open that one and now you can see this one's a little different now when you're in this editor some of the cool things that you can do uh, you know if you're having a hard time seeing because these are kind of dark you can always darken the background and switch up the background so it might be easier to see what's going on and what's transparent by clicking on this button up here within the editor uh, I find it to be helpful sometimes you can even add a grid if you want and kind of see things in a grid right now my grid set really high um, and you can toggle it on off just by clicking this button but you can also configure the grid so if I was to make to something smaller like say you know 20 by 20 or something right um, and you can even snap to the grid we can hit okay now you can see there's a grid in there now this isn't necessarily useful for what we're doing right now but just so you're aware that's what you can do in these uh, these sprite editors right in this case the tile map uh, editor so I'm gonna shut that off we're gonna hit X and shut this off also now now that we've added this object to the scene you can kind of see it usually what it does is automatically expands the full scene right so it'll make a shape that's the size it's close to the size of the background personally I liked it whoops I didn't want to do that but yeah if we want to scale it just a little bit larger than the world right so we'll zoom in here and we'll scale that out just a little bit larger uh, in the world here and the reason is sometimes when you get to the edge of the actual world uh, if you go to try to paint something like in the very bottom corner if it's not completely going to get filled in like a part of it goes out of the world uh, if it matches that size it won't paint it in so I tend to just make it a little bit larger than the world even though the default matches the world just in case you run into issues like that okay so cool we have it in here now you can always rename it if you're gonna have multiple tile maps for any particular reason you can rename them I'm just gonna leave it tile map but you're more than welcome to rename any of these things as you can see as I begin to bring those objects in they'll show up under object types you're more than welcome to rename things just by clicking on it and just waiting a second um, right and you can even right click and rename so you can do the same thing there um, but that will allow you to uh, to name your things and be a little bit more organized 
all right but on the tile map itself we definitely want to have it selected so we can click it over here and then we're going to switch over to the tile map itself and now we'll see this little cool editor right and it's it's showing that i have like all of these little um you know like sections i can start working with now you might notice of course that these sections don't match the sizes of the tiles that are in here the way you can change that is over here now i already know what the sizes of this particular tile map are and they're 16 by 16 and the default is set to 32 by 32 um, but of course it's going to be up to uh, whatever the artist did or whatever you do if you're going to create your own now if i set it to 16 by 16 and then click over now you'll notice that they fit the same size now this might really really tiny it's hard for me to see what the heck i'm doing keep in mind that you can zoom in and out so we can kind of zoom in here and actually see these i could even move you know of course um the the bars here so we can kind of get an even better look but now you can see how we'll hover over a very particular tile and they're numbered you'll see the first one's zero then there's one two three four and then all the way down so depending on how many you have uh, obviously there'll be different numbers now some of these have transparencies on them that's what you can see and these these two tiles are useless there's really nothing in them uh, but you can see how we have these other ones that do have a little bit of a transparency to them. Now, of course, uh, once you have that, now the cool thing, of course, is we can start painting in uh, uh, using these. And there's several options that we can do with that. Now, first, if you just click on this, this won't let you do anything other than, you know, just like select stuff. Um, so you can come in here and just select things, and not worry about painting things in. But you'll pick a tile. Say I pick tile number two here. And then you can click on the draw tool and you can come into your world. I'll zoom in here. And I'm going to start drawing these tiles. Now, of course, if you make a mistake and draw a bunch like I did here, of course, you can either hit Control-Z to undo them, or if you hold down Control, you can erase. So I can paint just by uh, clicking on the mouse, left-click. Um, but if I want to delete any of them at any point, I hold down Control, and it'll give me a preview of which ones I'm deleting, and then you can start deleting them. Right, so that's really cool how you can quickly draw that. Now, this is also the eraser tool, so you can manually just erase. But you know, obviously, with the hotkey control, I don't see any point of actually clicking on that. You can also fill a whole scene up with a paint bucket. Once again, not so sure why I want to use this, but this one's cool. If you have one, like you want to repeat a bunch of them, like this one, these are all just like jet black ones practically. Um, but if you want to make a giant area of a whole bunch of them, you can make a box selection using this tool. If I click and hold my mouse, I can just make a whole big giant box selection of them. So that can help you save some time if you're trying to create, whoops, I uh, didn't want to do that, so we'll hit cancel on that. Um, but you can, like I said, just basically... Uh, draw a whole box at once so it's up to you a little bit more um, you know fine tuning with the draw tool but a nice big section can be done with this now you can even flip the direction the object is looking you know with these right here so just to show you guys how that works and even rotate them and so on so if I want to like mirror it say I click on this one you'll see how it will draw that tile into the scene like this and I have the box so let me go back to this so you'll see it'll draw that tile into the scene as such of course if I hit the mirror tool over here and come back now it's the opposite so you can get effects like that some tile maps will just have both versions they're flipped so you don't have to worry about this particular tile map doesn't so you will have to use that if you want it to go the opposite direction and so on so i'm just going to undo that now we're not going to do anything crazy here um and actually in my notes you'll see that um, I'll start naming the numbers of the different uh, the different tiles, and so you're more than welcome to look at the notes later, pause the video, kind of read the notes in regards to what tile means what, because I'm really not going to spend a lot of time on that. We just need to get some bare bone ground objects uh, set up for now, um, because I don't want to make the video too long as I'm painting all this crazy stuff in there. But we want to make sure that the player has something to move on, right, to to jump around and whatever, because that's what actually, as you can see down here, the next video. Okay, so we're going to get into the character in the next video. So obviously the point of doing this first is to give us a background, give us something to draw. So I'm going to go back in here, and like I said, I'm just going to draw. So we'll zoom out, and I'll just draw like a platform area for the player to run back and forth on, and then maybe another area that they can jump on over here just real quick. Now, right now, these don't have any collisions. So if we want to add collision to a tile map, right? So if you happen to have a tile map, and it has, um, you know, it has like... Uh, things that are more of a decoration you can bring them in and not put collision on the tile map and then you can paint in decorations so if you have little things you can paint decorations all over the place uh, with this particular tile map we actually want all of these pieces to have collision so this is how you add collision now with the tile map selected coming over here on the side we want to take a look at the behaviors section and over here on behaviors if we click on behaviors we come over here, add new behavior and we're just going to go solid okay and that will allow it to actually have some collision 
collision. It's pretty simple. That's really all you need to do. Now, if you want to edit collision, now you'll see that these all have and will have square collision. So we obviously don't need to edit the collision because by default, they're going to be square. And if you want to double check, you can always double click on any of these tiles and open it up, right? And this is the only way you can access the collision is by coming in here and double clicking on a tile. And with this button over here selected, which is called the edit the collision polygon button, right? You'll see the collision. Now we can move collision, whatever, but this one fits the box perfectly. So we don't need to touch this one, but clearly you'll see that these certain tiles do need a difference. So if I say double click on this one now, and I'll zoom out a little bit, right? And we'll make this all lighter. So it's a little easier to see. Now we can manipulate the collision. So I can grab any of these points and manipulate them, right? And change it, right? You can even like right click and add points. Um, or you can select all of the points if you want, you can have it guess the shape. Um, as you can see there, it does a pretty poor job. I actually find that the guessing of the shape tool is pretty horrendous. So I pretty much never use it. But what you could also do is just select a point like with this, because it's more of going to be a triangle, I could pick one point hit delete just on my keyboard, and then move this one down down and uh, you know kind of line it up like this and that should be pretty good right there right and we'll actually have the right collision that we want so you're gonna want to make sure that you do that for all of the other types of objects so we can shut that off you know go to the next one fix that and so on right same thing with this one uh, we can just delete one of the points right grab the other one move whoops move it up where it needs to be and actually in this case I was being silly actually I really don't want to delete that point I want to do this because there is some thickness to it right not paying attention you guys pay attention don't listen to me um so yeah there we go just kind of do that that would be great right and then you can just go in and shut that off right and you can see how the collisions just remembered even if you shut it off so you're going to want to do that and fix the collision for everything that needs to be fixed otherwise you're good to go so that's how the uh the collision works all right so i've done pretty much most of the stuff we're talking about now um, as you can see here, um, you know, we talked about the different stuff showing grids, yada, 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 um, the rectangle stuff. Like I really get into a lot more detail, uh, within some of these to, to do more. And like I said, I really want to avoid that in this video, but you're more than welcome. Like I said, to pause it, kind of look at the notes and go in and do that. But pretty much all the things I talked about are in here. Like if you want to make the downhill sections, I tell you the 26th tile and 27th tile, um, those make hills, you know, 24 serves as a transition from two to seven to 26 and yada, yada or two or seven to 26 and yada 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 but like i said that's just going to take forever and if you might not you're not using these sprite sheets it's going to be a waste of your time um so that's just so that you're aware now i already showed you before and i told you you can't delete the collision off a tile map so that if there are decorations within the tile map you just need to make a different tile map and paint in the decorations with no collision with no solid in their behaviors and you should be fine now you could also crop them out so that's another thing that you can do, right? So if you if you want in any kind of tiled image, I'm not going to actually do it, but I'll show you if I click on my tile map here, you can always use like the selection tool, make a selection around something and then click the crop tool and you can actually save that out as a separate sprite. So if you happen to want to just get a couple of sprites, you know, whatever, I, mean, I guess I can give you an example. And it doesn't even have to be that like you can't redo your um, uh, your selection once you do it so you click off of it and I can make a different selection maybe not something super precise but just so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about then I can go like this and then crop that and now this can be saved as a separate uh, tile map or whatever okay um, and uh, you can see now that uh, I kind of jacked up my uh, my tile map so obviously we don't want to do that but I'll just hit control Z and undo that um, but yeah you can you can do that and get, pick a particular sprite uh, and have that set up so that is another option uh, if you want so there you go so that's pretty much all of the information I wanted to tell you guys in this particular video even though yes we do have a lot more written in here but as I said before that's just more notes for you guys if you want to pause it and you're using the same content otherwise I gave you everything else you need to know so the next one is the player and character and camera and I will see you guys in that video